is not one sin that Jesus did not die for on the cross for you. I say this all the time, bad grammar, my wife corrects me all the time, but I'm not changing. I don't want to change. I was born this way, bad grammar. Well, maybe that's a bad transition to what I want to talk about today. But it's a Lady Gaga song, and I love me some Lady Gaga. Is Jesus for you if you are a homosexual? And this is where we, where some people get like, the, what we do is we, we level sins up, right? So you have here, you're just the, the common uh, uh, narthex gossiper. That's not that big a deal. You know you shouldn't do it, but don't worry. Jesus kind of looks the other way. He doesn't really hear you. You know, Jesus is too busy doing big sins. So that one is easy to forgive and forget. But then, then you move on to like the road rage. You know, you threaten to kill the person in front of you. That's a little bigger. And then you get to, you know, like the, the people that cheat on each other. That's another one that gets a little bigger. Then you get to like robbery and stuff like that. But then there's certain sins that we in the Missouri Synod like to say, you know what, that's just really outside. That's something we're not going to talk about. But the thing is, we like to do that because we don't understand what it means to be forgiven ourselves, what it means to be set free. Is your identity as a forgiven child of God or is your identity in your sexuality? Is that what you do? Like when someone meets me and they go, tell us about yourself, I don't go into a 20-minute spiel about my gender and sexuality. First thing is I am a forgiven child of God. That's who I am. And Christ isn't going to abandon me. He is the one who has done all things for me. He's told me I can be in church. He's told me I can go to heaven. And guess what? He says the same thing to the one who struggles with their sexual orientation. He says the same thing to them. But we don't want to hear that because that's one that's like, well, this is a choice. No, it's, hmm. we'd like to have it that way because then we can sleep better at night or think we're better at night because I've chosen to be a better person. No, you don't choose to be anything. In fact, all of us all the time reject the Holy Spirit. Stephen said that in his sermon to the Sadducees in Acts 7. We're always rejecting the Holy Spirit. So we are saved, not because I did something. This is the thing. You never say you're saved with the first person pronouns. I did something. I believed, I had faith, I went to church. No, you are saved from sin, death, world, and the power of the devil because Jesus says you are. Because Jesus died on the cross for you. Because Jesus says you can come to church. Because Jesus says you can go to heaven. That's how it all happens. And it is not for us to limit where that line finally stops with here's the stuff Jesus said is okay and here's the stuff that isn't. So we must always remember that on the cross, Christ assumed every single sin with which we struggle. And that includes struggling with our identity, who we are attracted to. So we don't also go the route this way. Well, I'm going to pray for you then that one day these demons leave you and you finally get with it. I'll do the same for you then, you gossiper. Loose lips. I'll do that for you too. No. You say, hey, Jesus is with you. He is for you, and he will carry you through this unto himself in heaven. So God bless you all. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Higher Things video shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.